Today's Saturday story time, boys and girls, occurs on Holy Saturday, the most holy of all Saturdays. Today I'm going to read to you from Into the Sea, Out of the Tomb. It's a rather interesting title. It will become clear as we read. This might look familiar, and this might look familiar. Into the Sea. God had a special mission for a man named Jonah. He told Jonah to go to a great city called Nineveh. The people there were doing wicked things and God wanted Jonah to warn them. God had a special mission for his son, Jesus. He sent Jesus to a great city called Jerusalem. The people there were trapped in their sins and God wanted Jesus to save them. And so as we go on, we're going to hear about Jonah and about Jesus, how they are similar, but also how they are different. In particular, how Jesus is a fulfillment, a coming true and a lifting up in a better way everything that Jonah did Jesus did better. Jonah didn't want to do God's will, so he ran from God and journeyed away from Nineveh. Jesus wanted to do God's will, so he obeyed his father and journeyed toward Jerusalem. Here's Jonah walking away from Nineveh, and notice where he's walking. And here is Jesus walking toward Jerusalem to follow God's will. One day, Jonah boarded a ship. In the middle of the sea, a strong wind blew and threatened to break apart the ship. The sailors in the ship with Jonah were frightened, but Jonah was fast asleep. One day, Jesus boarded a boat. In the middle of a lake, a squall blew and threatened to sink the boat. The disciples in the boat with Jesus were frightened, but Jesus was fast asleep. And here's a picture of a boat with one person asleep in both situations. And in this case, it looks like the 12 apostles, and I think that's Jesus. The sailors woke up Jonah and asked him to pray to his God to protect them from the raging storm. The people in the boat were all in danger of dying in the storm. Jonah was guilty. He knew it was his fault, so he prepared to give up his life so that others might live. The disciples woke up Jesus, and because he was God, he protected them by calming the storm. The people of the world were all in danger of dying in their sins. Jesus was innocent. He knew it wasn't his fault, but he prepared to give up his life so that others might live. And here is Jonah being ready to disembark from that ship. And then here is Jesus. Notice he had calmed the waves. The sailors didn't want to kill Jonah. They asked God not to charge them with shedding innocent blood. On the ship's deck, the sailors cast lots. Jonah told the sailors to throw him into the sea. The crowds wanted to kill Jesus. Pilate asked Jesus about the charges against him, and he said he was innocent of this man's blood. On Calvary's hill, the soldiers cast lots. Jesus let the soldiers nail him to a cross. And look at this picture. Jonah is looking up at the sailors in the boat. And here is Jesus looking down upon the soldiers who are casting lots to see if they would get his clothing. Jonah was thrown into the sea. The raging storm stopped and the sailors were afraid. 
They were filled with fear of Jonah's God. When Jesus died on the cross, the earth quaked and rocks split, and the witnesses were afraid. They said Jesus was the Son of God. Hmm, look at that. Something is going up to Jonah. And then here we have Jesus on the cross after the earthquake, after he had died for our sins. A big fish swallowed Jonah. He stayed in its dark belly for three days and nights. Then Jonah was spit out on the shore, still alive. The disciples buried Jesus. His body stayed in the dark tomb until the third day. Then Jesus rose and left the grave alive. Here we have that gargantuan fish spitting Jonah out onto the shore. And then here we have Jesus rising from the dead. And notice the soldiers are awestruck. They were both three days, either in the belly of a whale or three days in a tomb. Now Jonah went to Nineveh. He told the people that in 40 days, God would destroy their city. The people repented and returned to God and God spared them. Now Jesus went to his disciples and stayed with them for 40 days, telling them about God's kingdom. Many disciples repented and believed in Jesus, and God forgave them. Here we have a picture of Jonah preaching to the Ninevites, and then Jesus preaching to his disciples. Jonah was angry when he looked at Nineveh and saw that God didn't destroy the city. Jonah thought the people didn't deserve God's favor, and he didn't want God to have mercy on them. But it was all part of the Father's special mission for Jonah. Because Jonah did God's will, the people had a chance to repent and live out their days in Nineveh, the city God saved. Jesus wept when he looked at Jerusalem and knew that its enemies would attack it. Jesus knew the people didn't deserve God's favor, but he wanted God to have mercy on them. It was all part of the Father's special mission for Jesus. Here we have Jonah looking over the city of Nineveh. He actually wanted it to be destroyed. Here is Jesus looking over Jerusalem, weeping, because he wanted them to be sorry for their sins. Because Jesus did his Father's will, his people had a chance to repent and live one day in the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of God. Look at that lamb. Next time you're in church of St. Agnes, you will see that there is a lamb carved under the altar. And boys and girls, the message of this story is that Jonah prefigured Christ, but only imperfectly. Jonah was three days in the tomb, I'm sorry, in the whale. Jesus was three days in the tomb. But the difference is Jonah wasn't always obedient. He wasn't always ready and willing to do God's will. Jesus was ready and willing to do God's holy will. And of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, here in the statue of the Pieta, was always ready to follow the will of God. My brothers and sisters, on this Holy Saturday, I ask you to consider, do you want to be like Jonah and very reluctantly do what God wants you to do? Or do you want to be like Jesus? follow God's will, and to imitate the Blessed Virgin Mary, who always said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to thy holy will. Boys and girls, I hope you had a very reflective Good Friday, and I hope today, as you wait for Easter, 
that you are very prayerful and that you are very cooperative with God's will, especially in your family, making sure you are working with your brothers and sisters, that you are being loving and obedient to your mother and father, and that you are always making sure to say your prayers and to be the son or daughter of God that God wants you to be. Happy Easter.